Let's get a YouTube and welcome to the house. Going second in Yu-Gi-Oh! is becoming more viable every single format it feels like. For rogue decks, more so than ever because in the past, it was mostly the meta deck. So what's making people roll those dice, win the dice roll, not get to go, oh yeah, I get to set up my board, but instead, you go ahead and set up your board. I'm going to take that extra card and battle phase. Let's go into a brief history of where it all started within the metagame, where it came from in rogue decks, and the options available now that are making it oh so more appealing to where people are even side decking, preparing to try to go second once again. It really started, I feel like, in Zodiac format, where you have an impressive board and you set up so many cards, but the zoo engine is so flawless, so amazing that people are going you know what, you go ahead and set up your board, I'll take that extra card, I'm gonna play cards like My Body is a Shield and Pianissimo, and try to use my Whip Tail to bust through your resources, and I don't care how many hand traps you're gonna throw at me, I have my normal summon, I have Barrage, I have access to all of this. Now, there was True Draco in this format too, but it really is Zodiac the Engine and Zodiac the Deck taking over almost that entire format, and it was freaking amazing how many options came from the meta that people were going to be willing to win that dice roll and choose to just pass to the opponent letting them go first it similarly happens in tier zero spiral where everyone is playing this deck for the most part there is pendulum magicians but let's face it it's called tier zero spiral and it's our last tier zero format that we had people are shoving 13 to 16 hand traps within these decks so much to the point that they want their double helix to resolve and get it set up and not get slapped out of the extra by winter cherries so they're going draw you go draw back set card you go they're not wanting to commit a monster to the field in fear of that card also ciphering gear gamma and so many others they need that helix to resolve and there are again so many hand traps in that format and more recently we have going second striker where this is a tier one deck that now rips that option instead of a tier zero deck and striker has this back and forth when it's more so full power that it's okay to garner all these extra resources and try to use your opponents against them that the extra card in battle phase it's getting a step ahead rather than a step behind versus the setup now striker has been hit time and time again on the ban list and now we see 36 card striker in this current meta we see striker orcas we see carter to my striker they very obviously more so want to go first than second in this current meta game with how they've been hit but before going second striker was a very strong option so what changed throughout time to make rogue decks viable for going second well the original really option for that comes from the invoked where we see it topping time and time again after it gets the mech knight engine originally the invoked are this deck that likes to set up that likes to get in the gates on board that likes to go first but all the second with the invoke being able to put out powerful fusion monsters aided by the mech knights you're able to get so much power on board and deal with your opponent's resources along with getting an aggressive negate that well this turns out really good for you and if they're playing ash blossom hand traps you're able to banish it for an even more powerful otk extender and purgatrio yeah the, the, it kind of backfired whenever you ash the alistair and they have that other invocation it's pretty insane so this went from a control deck to a control otk deck and top time and time again but now we're seeing back-to-back -back ycs decks by rogue going second decks like grin maju and it's awesome i've personally been playing this deck a lot and the power that's accessible to it thanks to the danger engine giving it consistency or golden castle giving it this outlet to banish cards and also get power on board it's really nice but it's not that it just changed over time to suddenly be that good is that it got tool after tool to be able to do it pancrotops for example is this amazing card for going second in almost any situation so much so that meta players end up siding three of these to force boards when they know their opponent's going to want to go first super polymerization also came off of the ban list two three and this is mr break your board right here oh sorry to assume your gender but seriously super polymerization is just crazy having access to mud dragon from last year's megatons to also having starving venom and having three of these really goes in now i think cali effect actually touched on this today but one hand trap 
two hand traps, it's not enough to stop what a lot of people are doing. So when decks are going second, they're actually looking less and less at certain hand traps and like that are more traditional like these two, although in permanence, I think it's really hard to replace. And they're looking more so for cards that end entire turns. Lancia being one example that stops your opponent from playing completely for the rest of the entirety of the turn. You also have Nibiru. I like how Ed Eception goes Nibiru in his older profiles, but as the meta has evolved, yes, there's Apollo, so there's ways to get to it, but you just have to know when to slam down your Nibiru and really shut down your opponent before that happens and what kind of boards they like to go to. Kind of study the metagame and the decks that you're against. Both of these uh, cards uh, do something, though, in permanence in Nibiru. They play through called by the grave which is not only a defense option but an aggressive option for those going second decks when you're playing uh called by the grave you're able to fade hand traps but also your opponent's resources that they might be using an orcus card coming back from graveyard like the Gearsu? nope you're going to be able to stuff it so this kind of odd enough twisted from a, an option to where well, hey, I want to set up with this to fade my opponent or have it in hand to dodge their hand traps to, oh, I'm going to aggressively push through using this. You also have the age-old favorite, Danko Seka. I've been playing this lately since I played Dangers in my Grin Maju. I still side it in and I'm able to find other ways to revive or summon Maju later in the turn. Shutting down back row is paramount to a lot of these aggressive decks because within the meta decks, you get searchable counter traps. Salomon Great, Orcus, you have access to those, but they don't shut down a card like Danko Seka and it makes them react with something like Dengirsu or it makes them react with their Mascarena if possible i think a lot of us though moving back in this conversation know the feeling of activating two to three hand traps and our opponent just still building this impossible board and us feeling asked out of the resources like we just don't have as many cards to deal with this board and they still were able to build it just in a different route oh and a negate uh, i'm sorry i'm just gonna go ahead and like end up summoning the galatea on your turn anyways and doing the, the gear suit plays and having access to everything like sometimes it just feels like it doesn't matter when you activate these cards and you need them to do more you need them to nuke an entire board you need them to shut off an entire graveyard and, and hand traps have really waned away from being accessible as the going second option you're looking at something that clears a board that takes care of a specific problem that can run over something by battle and then also pop it you're looking for a card that gives you a body on board and does two extra things as an engine for decks like dinosaurs that also love to go second there's just this really interesting niche of this swirl of cards that we've gained access to that allows so many decks to go second and win at it and i think one of the biggest things that people miss in the discussion of going second is boral sword boral sword is an otk enabler for any deck and they all have access to it and also can't be destroyed by battle it gets over your opponent's boss monsters by attacks because it buffs its own attack points it does so much for you and a going second deck depending on what you're playing that it just allows you to clear and push through it's crazy and i think another actual thing that i missed in this conversation that i should uh be bringing up is utopia double similarly that we saw in going second strikers in some very amazing moments thank you jesse cotton for the meal it was awesome utopia double is crazy 10k damage push through if you can make two level fours into this guy I, it's it's absurd to me that these cards are getting printed as like options just options you don't need them to win you don't need them to push through the damage thanks to dangers thanks to the consistency added in the game but they're just there in case you're able to get to them it's not the win condition it's a condition and that's what's really changed is this amount of options that you have you have utopia double you have Boral Sword, you have Pancratops, a big beater that also takes care of something in the battle phase should you want it. You have the ability to just microwave a board. You have the ability to make the biggest puncher ever in this point of the game. And even Magical Muskets are starting to go second. They, they gained a Link monster that wants your opponent to have cards. And this is rising rapidly, not only on Dueling Book, but we see it in the in real life metagame. So... It's no longer the meta decks that are clinging to going second, it feels like. A lot of them are wanting to set up and build their board, but it's the rogue decks that are punching through. They're topping regionals. They're topping YCSs. They're even winning here and there throughout this year. 
with the option to go second because they thrive on a format where the opponent is gladly going first. Thank you guys so much for watching this discussion. I really wanted to just bring up this uh, topic in general. I think Simo touched on it a couple of days too as well. So shout outs to these other tubers who also had similar viewpoints within the metagame. But I wanted to wrap it all together in terms of, I've been noticing this myself playing a going second deck for the last month and a half. And it's just really almost liberating to not care about the dice roll with most of the opponents in fact i'm usually shocked still when my opponent makes me go first but it's happened a lot more on dueling book in the past month that i've been noticing so let me know what deck you play that you enjoy going second with and what decks in the meta you think could revolve back around to going second if they got a little bit more power or hopefully disappear from the meta in some of your guys's eyes Again, subscribe if you haven't already. We're almost to 50,000 subs. Thank you guys so much. Like the video if you enjoyed the discussion. And let me know what you think about kind of the history of going second decks. Have I missed something there? Something that you maybe enjoyed playing? Let me know.